you've all heard of Amazon. In fact, most of you are probably waiting on a recent purchase from Amazon to arrive any day now. But do you know what goes on behind the scenes in one of their factories? A lot of Amazon's success is down to its innovative methods around technology, many of which were advocated by its billionaire CEO, Jeff Bezos. This innovative technology was a huge investment for the e-commerce giant and has, without a doubt, poured in spectacular results. In today's video, we will be taking a deep look into the smart robots that run the Amazon warehouses and how they have transformed Amazon into becoming one of the most efficient logistics operations in the world. But before we start, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos like this. It all started back in 2012. Amazon burned through $775 million to buy a young robotics company called Kiva Systems that allowed Amazon to take ownership of a new type of robot. These robots transport all kinds of things from individual boxes to fully loaded pallets. But how do they do it? Well, it's actually pretty clever. These little guys read barcodes on the ground for directions, so they always know when to turn and how fast to move. Kind of like a train on a train track. While Kiva had various customers before, with some of those being The Gap, Staples, Walgreens, Office Depot, and many more. Amazon didn't renew these agreements, and Kivas are currently only utilized by them. Since then, teams of specialists and roboticists have worked intimately with partners to consolidate innovations to smooth out operations, increase efficiency, and improve safety. These partners are playing a critical role in shaping the eventual fate of the e-commerce giant, as well as Jeff Bezos' race to become the first trillionaire. Robots have increased efficiency as well as safety at fulfillment centers. They're responsible for allowing 40% more inventory storage, which thus makes it easier to fulfill Amazon Prime and other orders in an extremely punctual manner. Just look at that efficiency. Amazon Robotics can store up to 50% more items than with manual pickers and can get an item within 15 minutes, which is a big difference compared to a manual worker who takes 60 to 75 minutes. As such, these robotics make a critical and significant contribution to Amazon's drive to allow a smarter, quicker, and steadier customer experience. That's not the only benefit these robots bring. Don't forget about job creation. Since its arrival in 2012, Amazon has added in excess of 300,000 full-time positions around the world, which include positions in IT and robot maintenance. Furthermore, fulfillment centers that have robots usually have higher employment numbers, since inventory is moved at a quicker speed, which requires additional workers to load trucks and apply barcodes, etc. As of now, around 26 of the 175 fulfillment centers around the world use these awesome Kivas, and these numbers are steadily expanding. So what are the different robots Amazon uses? What do they look like? Meet the mechanical employees of Amazon's warehouses. First up, we have the Kiva. The Kiva is essentially the robot that Kiva provided to Amazon. Back in those days, it was called DU-1000 for a driving unit with a lifting limit of 1,000 pounds. The Kiva is about 75 centimeters long and 60 centimeters wide, allowing it to fit nicely underneath a pod that measures roughly one by one meter. It is 30 centimeters high, weighs around 110 kilograms and can lift 450 kilograms. Like most of the robots in Amazon, it has a speed of five kilometers per hour which is comparable to walking speed. Many of you viewers know them as Kivas. Even if Amazon purchased Kiva Systems in 2012, nevertheless, Amazon utilizes the name Amazon Robotics and does not use the term Kiva anymore. How do these little guys work? These robots move shelves or racks that are called pods. These pods are conveyed to the stower stations, which look fundamentally the same as the picking stations. The stower takes the cases from the inbound zone and scans the various items in it. Like the manual stowers, they can put it on any free slot on the pod and in any order. The item is then added by the stower. Once the item has been inserted into the pod and confirmed, the stower gets the next area or pod for the following item, where they navigate by utilizing QR codes on the floor. The Kiva will constantly take a look at the space on the unit and make calculated decisions whether to carry on loading or wait for another pod. Also, if the stower sees any damaged item, they will send that item to an amnesty bin to be observed later. Then we have the Hercules. The Hercules goes back to the first Kiva Systems advancement in 2007. It was called DU3000 back in the day, as a driving unit whose lifting capacity was 3,000 pounds. Yes, 
The Hercules is intended for heavy duty lifting. The principle is basically like its cousin. Yet, the Hercules can lift significantly more weight, which explains where he got his name from. It is bigger in all measurements, and in this manner, the pods are likewise bigger. These are pallet pods, which are pallets on a casing with legs for the robot to go under. Next up on the list is the Pegasus. The Pegasus was the name of the original Kiva successor and has the same purpose as the original Kiva, which moves pods around. Nevertheless, it is just 19 centimeters high, which is 10 centimeters less than the Kiva. This implies that there is an additional 10 centimeters of space to store items. It can also lift 560 kilograms. What's more, it has just half the parts and is less expensive. It is improbable that Amazon will replace all Kivas, since this would be costly. Still, they may utilize the Pegasus for new fulfillment centers. Amazon expresses that they particularly want to use it near city centers, and they need more fulfillment centers near high populous densities to have more items delivered in one to two hours. Be that as it may, being near a huge population implies that everyone needs to be there as well and competes for the site, which drives costs up. The Pegasus is a great addition to the workforce as it assists with fitting more stuff into a distribution center. And guess what? Around 100 Pegasus robots are now working at Amazon. Then we have the Pegasus X Sort Drive. This robot may sound like an epic character from a well-known mecha anime, but it's just your ordinary Amazon employee. It has a unique purpose and doesn't convey pods, but instead, it sorts and transports finished parcels to shipping. After labeling, a worker places the parcel on the robot. The robot is smart enough to know which truck the package goes to and moves to the assigned chute. At the chute, the transport line tosses the package into it. The Pegasus is also planned to be a non-exclusive base for various attachments on top. And one such attachment is the X sort drive. Fundamentally, half a meter of transport line. As opposed to the wreck caused by commonly used transport lines for sorting, the robots allow considerably more adaptability in changing the fulfillment center. As per Amazon, it has significantly reduced the missorting blunders. And with that, it will assist Amazon to become more adaptable. Amazon needed to program more traffic rules and needed to create a new position called a flow control specialist. Up next is the RoboStow. This guy is much different from his cousins and is described as a more normal looking robot. Well, because it stays put where it's installed. The RoboStow is a typical robot used to lift pallets or boxes around. These robots are not Amazon core technology, but normal third party robots. A similar robot in Bad Hartsfield, Germany, was made by ABB Robotics and cutely called Chuckleberry. Additional fact, it was the only robot there since it was a manual fulfillment center. Many of these types of robots are found in fulfillment centers as well. There's also the Amazon Slam machines. And before you freak out, no, it has nothing to do with violently slamming your parcel around. It's actually an acronym that stands for Scan, Label, Apply, Manifest. The machine is used as a last quality check that weighs the package and compares the expected weight of the items. If ever there is an error, the package is checked again manually. During packing, a barcode is attached to the package. This connects the package with its related data, which is only machine intelligible. During SLAM, a machine checks this code, prints an appropriate delivery mark that people can also read. A fulfillment center may have somewhere near 10 SLAM machines. Then we have Amazon drones. The Amazon drone was brought about to bring parcels the last mile from the fulfillment center to the customer. They are presently capable of flying up to 15 miles, carrying as much as five pounds and delivering items within 30 minutes. How crazy is that? You could order a t-shirt and have a drone drop it off to your house in 30 minutes or less. These robots start and land just like a helicopter. However, they can also fly like a plane for longer distances. Say goodbye to one to three day shipping times. Amazon's just up their game. And lastly, we have the Amazon Scout. Like the drone, the Amazon Scout is utilized to deliver packages the last mile from the fulfillment center to the customer. But if you are raring to have your packages conveyed by this adorable robot, you have to live near the Amazon headquarters in Seattle. Additional robotics related innovations and developments are on their way. Soon, we'll be able to see more packaging that is enhanced by robots. Also, in case you're wondering whether the robots get worn out after a long workday, don't worry. Like all fulfillment center associates, these robots need breaks, 
and they know when it's an ideal opportunity to recharge. When they hit a specific point, they'll go to a charging station by themselves and fuel up for their next workday. Seriously, these robots are pretty impressive. And that ends today's video. What do you think of Amazon's robot army? Was there any that I missed? Let me know in the comments below and I will reply to as many as I can. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell icon to stay updated whenever we release a new video. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.